Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 20 in this series entitled SQL Server Data Tools Transact SQL in ASP.NET 4.5. If you've used previous versions of Visual Studio, you may miss the SQL User Instance Designer as it has been replaced by SQL User Instance Designer in Visual Studio 2012. It uses TSQL or Transact SQL to build and maintain databases. Proceeding with our activity, we will create an ASP.NET website and place it in CASP Activity 20. Then we will create an ASP.NET folder called App Data. Inside that folder, we will add a new SQL Server database named FirstDB, and then we will create a new table named Products with the following fields, Product ID, Product Name, Price, Supplier ID. Then we will add three records. So let's create our new website, File, New Website, and we're going to call it Activity20. Here, we will right-click and add an ASP.NET folder called App Data. Inside that folder, we will add a new item, a SQL Server database, and we're going to call it FirstDB. Now, notice that there are two files automatically created. The first is the physical file for the SQL Server database. Uh, with an extension of MDF, and the other one is a log file. Uh, on the left side, you can already see the server explorer. If you don't, then simply double click firstdb.mdf. You can see that under the connection, there is our database, and under it are the different resources that we can create out of it. So let's create our table by simply right clicking tables, add new table. This is Transact SQL. Okay, so for the ID, we'll change it to product ID. Now it's integer and it has to be an identity. So for the identity, is identity, we'll set it to true. Then we have the product name, which is a bar car 50, and it's not allowed to be null. Then the price, which is float, it's allowed to be null. And the last one is the supplier ID, which is an integer, and it's not allowed to be null. So to save it, we're going to name it um, products. Then click this update button on top. Then click update database. Now you will see here the comment if it was successful. To add the three records, first uh, refresh the tables. There is the products. And there are our fields. So to add a new data, right click the products table and then show table data. From here, we can add the records. We are not going to supply anything on product ID because it is an identity, meaning it will automatically generate its value. So the values are pen, the price is 1.5 and one. The second value is eraser, it's one and two. And the last value is paper, it's three and two. Okay, we're done. The four basic SQL statements are select, insert, update, and delete. Please take note that all these four examples are applicable to our table products. The first one using select displays all the records and all the fields from the table products that all records and all fields is represented by this asterisk or star. The second example tries to insert into our products table this row, this record, bag 7, 1, where bag represents the product name, 7 for price, and 1 for the supplier ID. Notice that the product ID is not listed here because it is an identity, which means that its value is automatically added. The third example tries to update our products table by setting a new value for the price. That new value is this price times 2. 
and it will take effect only for records whose supplier ID is equal to 1. The last one is we're trying to delete from the products table everything that has a product ID equal to 1. To continue with our activity, we will try to use query to perform all those previous examples. To create a query, you have to right-click tables and select new query. From here, we can type our SQL statement. The first one is to display all the fields and all the records from the table products. When done, you can see that there is also intelligence here, so I can simply click that. To execute it, you can use execute button or control shift E. Now you can see that there is now all our fields and all our records for products table. The second SQL statement tries to insert a new record into our products table. There is the products table. Inside the parentheses, we're going to place here all the fields except for the one that's identity, the product ID. So this is product name, price, and supplier ID. There, supplier ID, followed by values. Again, inside parentheses, display bag for the name of the product. And then the price is seven, and the supplier ID is one. Now we can execute it again. One row has been affected. If you go back to the data and try to refresh it, you can see that the fourth record has already been added. Let's go back to our query. The third one tries to update, of course, our products table by setting the price build to its new value of the original price times 2. But it will affect only for those whose supplier ID is equal to 1. We know that it's only going to affect one record. So let's try it. Before that, let's go back to the products. Supplier ID there, 1. So it's going to affect uh, records 1 and 4. Ah, so 2, 2 records. Let's go back to our query. Let's try to execute it. Two rows were affected. So if we go back to the data, <coughs> excuse me, and we try to refresh it, it's now 3 and 14. Okay, let's go back to our query. For the last one, we will try to delete a record. We will delete from the table products uh, a record where the product ID is equal to 1. Let's go first to our data where product ID is equal to 1. So that means this first record. Okay. Let's try to run it, execute it one row affected. So if we go back to the data, we lost it. Ah, oh, sorry, we have not yet refreshed it. There, <laughs> we lost it now, okay. Transact SQL has aggregate and string functions. Its aggregate functions include ABG, SUM, MIN, MAX, and COUNT. Its string functions include CONCAT, LEFT, REN, REPLACE, and WRITE. For our activity, we will try to get the minimum and maximum price in products table using one query only. And second, we will replace all letter A in product name with U. Currently shown are all the data from our products table. So if we're going to get the minimum and the maximum it, for the price, it's certainly just 1 and 14. So let's go to our query. We will select the minimum for the price as well as the maximum for the same field price from table products. Okay, so let's try to run it. There, minimum is 1 and the maximum is 14. For our second part, we will try to replace all letter A's in product names with letter U. So select, replace in product name all letter A's with letter U from products. There, from products. Try to execute it. There, a rooster, pooper, and bug. There are four ways of joining tables in Transact SQL. 
inner, left, right, and self. And these are examples for each. The first three are applicable to our products table, but the fourth one isn't. So let's just proceed with our activity. We will create a new table called suppliers with the following fields, supplier ID and supplier name. Then we will add two records, alasamol and otimol. Before we create a new table, we will try to close all our windows. No. For the tables, the windows for the tables. Then we can create now by right-clicking table, add new table. We'll start with the fields. This is supplier ID. And like the product ID, it is an identity. So there, identity. Meaning values will automatically be added. And the other one is supplier name which is bar car 50 and it's not allowed to be null. The name is suppliers. Now we can update it. Update the database. That's successful. Next is we can add, uh, we'll try to refresh it so we can see it there. Now we are going to add some data to our supplier. We'll just put al asamol and otim mall these are our suppliers okay so for our last two activities uh, the first one we're going to display all the fields from products table and only the supplier name from the suppliers table and we're going to use inner join and the second one we're going to display all fields from suppliers table then left join it with the products and we will show its product id the first letter of the product name and the double of the price field. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's start with our query. Right click tables, new query. Now, for the first one, we're going to involve two tables. So, if we are going to involve two tables, we have to use al aliases for those tables. So, we're going to join uh, products. Let's have an alias of it for P and the suppliers. Let's have an alias for it of S. Then, um, we're going to display all the fields for products. So that's P dot star or asterisk. And then, only the supplier name for S. So that is S, that's the alias, and then supplier name. Okay, we're done. Now for the where, we have to join them using inner join. So that is P that supplier ID is equal to S that supplier ID. Okay, that's it. Let's try to execute it. There, you can see it. Product ID has all the fields, including the supplier ID. And then only the supplier name for the supplier stable. Okay, good. Now let's do the second one. For the second one, we're going to select also all the fields for the supplier. And for the product, it will be a little messy. But uh, from suppliers... We should start with the suppliers, suppliers S, because we're going to left join it with the product P. Correct. And then we don't uh, use where there. Instead, we use on. Okay, I'll just change this where to on. Okay, this is good. So what are our fields? The first one is easy. That is the product ID, correct? The second one, we should put only the first letter of product name. So we're going to use left. And then the product name. That is P dot product name. Only the first letter, so that's one. And this the third one, or the last one, would be the price doubled times two. Correct. I think it's correct. So let's try to execute it. There. 
So we start with the uh, we started with uh, the values or the fields from the supplier. These two supplier ID and supplier name. Then the product ID. Then the first letter only of the product name, and then the double of the price. Okay, that's it. So we just finished discussing SQL Server data tools using Transact SQL in ASP.NET 4.5. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Mas salamat.